Eventually, I move on to wanting to pull from any number of n populations, and I'll pull any number of samples from that. In design of experiments, we often do uh, two by three experiments where we end up with eight different samples being drawn, and we want to know the difference in performance across those eight samples. What tends to happen here is that the mean data coming through starts to mean less and less. Over here on the left, we, we started out talking almost exclusively about hypothesis of the mean. In the middle, we tend to still talk about the mean or the difference in the means, and we start to take into account differences in variation that would drive that. By the time we get out here, we're really less interested in the mean. What is the mean value across eight different samples mean to me? What I really start to look at much more heavily is the variance within and across the sample. So variation within the sample can be measured and evaluated, and variation across the different samples can be measured and evaluated. And I start to get more information out of that kind of analysis than I will just at looking at the means. So at this point, you've, you've crossed into a technique known as the analysis of variance. We've been moving in that direction the whole time, but once we get over to this end of the continuum, it really is the variance that starts to matter uh, far more than the mean going through. I'll typically move into Excel uh, when I do this kind of, a, of analysis. Uh, so be willing to look at Excel if you don't already know it already. So we can do a single factor, ANOVA, which is analogous to what we did in this, in this, this second test. We have to, the, the problem with a two factor, uh, two sample test with a single factor is we have to figure out what factor we're going to look at. Maybe the difference between two classes and then block out the other variables. I still have to do that in an ANOVA if I'm dealing with a single factor. But eventually I move to a multi factor ANOVA where I don't have to know in advance which factors are most important. So rather than blocking the sample according to this. I won't block at all. I'll just do an ANOVA where I look at the key variable I'm interested in, the difference between the two classes perhaps, plus I'll include in the analysis each of these variables as variables in the analysis and let the ANOVA tool tell me which ones are significant and which ones aren't in understanding the data. Because it could be that I did an experiment to study the difference between online and live education and I concluded that perhaps that live is still better than online or vice versa. Ignoring the fact that the real interesting part of the data is that academic level and age and income really drive the difference. It makes no difference which class you take. These are the factors that really influence things. And this, thing, this hypothesis would not have identified that. I could have done the hypothesis test based on samples that are looking at differences in age and made which type of class a blocking factor. But over here, I'm really only looking at one factor at a time. This, over here in ANOVA, I can look across all the different factors and find out what's important. In fact, eventually I move on to regression. Regression looks at all of the important variables, the significant variables that come out of all this analysis, and tells me quantitatively exactly which of them are important and how important are they. Can I quantify how much impact each one has? Because it could be that only some of these variables are important, but even among the important, it might be that age bracket is the most important and academic level is the second most important and that we could build that way. If I do good regression, uh, I can then move to simulation to actually build a simulation on that quantitative model as I go through. So variation becomes everything in the multi-factor experimentation and regression. Um, that I come through. And it all drives off of variance, which if I work my way back, we saw variance simply as the presumption um, that variance is based on n minus 1 in a single sample. So all of that material, all that reasoning has been growing through several chapters of statistical analysis until finally we end up with the primary tools we use as engineers of ANOVA and regression that drive a lot of our engineering activities.